Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we've got something that you might have actually seen here before. So if you followed the videos over Christmas time, you would have seen this TD5. So if you're wondering why it's on the channel again, well, it had some issues when it was returned home, sadly. Uh, let's explain. So you may recall that this one had quite a few issues with the fuel system at the time of the, uh, of the previous vlogs and it's come back to figure out what's actually going on. So let's show you what happens when you go to start the vehicle now. Holding full throttle. Yeah. So if you give it some more throttle, it will, it will eventually pick up, but sadly it's got some air in the fuel system somehow. So we uh, recovered fuel pump. Fuel, we've since done fuel filled to head. Uh, it's had brand new injectors. It's had a, um, uh, a brand new fuel pressure regulator. And one thing that we did notice that we didn't actually think would be an issue at the time of changing the injectors was, it looks like the injector seats uh, have been cut. <clears throat> Excuse me. It looks like the injector seats have been cut. Um, now we've seen lots of injector seats that have been cut before in the workshop when we've done work on vehicles uh, with the injectors. Now we've never had a problem, we've no, never knowingly had a problem with the injector seal on that sort of circumstance, but with this, uh, with this TD5, this one is actually fitted with a GTB 550. And what we actually do think is a possibility at this point um, that the, um, the, the, the copper washers on the ends of the uh, injectors there are perhaps not got the best seal with the seats being cut. And combine that with the 550, the cylinder pressure and the torque that a, a 550 turbo, GTB 550 turbo can actually make. We are thinking um, that it's just enough to breach uh, the injector seals and then as the vehicle cools down thermal expansion um, it takes place does its thing and perhaps there's a gap that's opening up um, in the injector washer so with uh, without further ado I think we need to pop this vehicle onto into one of the bays uh, workstation bays and uh, remove the injectors we'll have we'll have a look at these uh, seats we'll have a look at the seals on the washer on the injector washers and uh, we'll make a decision with whether we're going to go with a replacement cylinder head now having spoken with the customer he said that if we go with a replacement head he'd really like to go with the amc head so let's have a look at these seals and then let's have a look at this head if we go through with it again another little walk around the shop people do ask what have you got in the shop on the occasion this one's for a clutch engine that's actually, where are we? That is actually our truck cab that we're uh, assembling. Got a full restoration on that one. We've got this 110 in for an engine. I think there's two, I think this one achieved 240,000 miles. So, yeah, <laughs> time for a new one. And then. Here we go, right, we was talking injectors and seals, so pulled the injectors out. And I'm not sure with this camera if I can show, I'll do, do my best. So yeah, the copper washer, this is the sealing washer essentially. And there's a few marks around that. Normally you get a ring around it from the seal. And if we just move towards the cylinder head, oop just down in the bottom 
this channel right down in the bottom there. There's little, little marks where the seats have been cut. And I think that the seals potentially are less than ideal. Now, having had, wait for the door to stop beeping, having had a conversation with the owner of this vehicle, um, what we are going to go with, uh, with regards to the cylinder head, is an AMC cylinder head. Because what we don't want to do, we don't want to cut these. So we're going to go with an AMC cylinder head. Not sure if I can manage the unboxing one handed, but this is how you'd receive your cylinder head. I'll get this out of the box and show it. Right, so AMC cylinder head. This is exactly as you would receive it. Yeah, so uh, it comes without the cam. With I think there are options with without cam. Cam in uh, customer's vehicle is absolutely uh, fantastic condition. No um, no scoring or wear marks or anything like that. So uh, would reuse that. The cams are actually quite expensive. Um, several hundred pounds, I think. I don't want to say the amount in case I get it wrong. Um, but yeah, they're very expensive. Um, but yeah, this is how you would see the cam. Cam the head. So it does need assembling. It needs a fuel pressure regulator fitting to it with the little uh, filter o-ring etc uh, inlet manifold exhaust manifold um, obviously it comes without any um, tensioners or anything like that for the timing chain but that is what you would receive See there, the uh, injector port there, looking perfectly flat and sealed, fresh from machining. Obviously a brand new AMC cylinder head. Again, injector port's looking perfect. film anything okay right so uh, just focusing on these injector seals a little closer into detail so <clears throat> the side that's showing here is actually the side that would go um, on the injector side um, so you've obviously got a nice evidence mark where the injector has Im imprinted um, and sealed nicely there however if you turn each one of these washes over hopefully it shows on the camera perhaps we'll zoom in and have a look um, they're just they're all really scored up now I know that uh, when these are squished um, and fitted in the vehicle that yep yeah, that's what they're there for they're to squish up but they just they look really uh, really bruised up and uh, and I think that's potentially where we're uh, allowing air into the fuel system. And that is potentially giving us our non-start. Yeah.
Right, so we're in a position now where the cylinder head's been removed. Uh, nothing's been cleaned up currently, uh, but the head's been removed. And uh, it's nice to see that the pistons look uh, all nice after making such, such high horsepower and torque. They all look nice. Um, the reason I'm uh, showing this is these uh, uprated cylinder head bolts and studs that we do, stud and nut kit, um, they're actually reusable. Uh, I think we've used, I was speaking with Will earlier on, uh, Will's our engine builder and uh, he uh, says that we've had our cylinder head off and recycled the uh, studs there at, well, around 10 times if not more. So definitely worth the investment if uh, it's an engine that, what well, A, you're going to be creating high horsepower um, and torque and, and B, for future proofing the vehicle. Uh, for example, if you plan on doing some service work on a regular basis, not that cylinder head gaskets is uh, regular service work, but in this case, it's uh, saved the customer a little bit, not a lot, but a little bit, with the uh, not needing to purchase new head bolts where you usually would do. Come on. There we go. Gasket looking perfect when it came off. Obviously no head gasket issues. Show both sides. All right, so that's head gasket removed. I'll just pop that aside. <clears throat> and it's time to just clean up the face of the cylinder head. So I'll just wipe off the thick of any uh, oil or coolant and then we'll go around it with a more suitable cloth and use some brake cleaner and just make sure everything's perfect for sealing up. So this was actually, uh, this actually had a head gasket whilst these uprated bolts were fitted in December, early December, mid-December. So that's why everything in here is, well, that's why these surfaces are looking like they don't need much preparation at all. So we'll avoid touching the pistons, I think, because I think a lot of people often wipe down the pistons and there's always a massive risk of just pushing dirt down towards the ring there. And uh, any dirt that's down there could contribute towards a sticking piston ring and that is what you don't want. You'll get lots of uh, problems like cylinder blow-by. You'll increase oil consumption uh, if you do that. So, a bit of blue roll, some brake cleaner on it. Again, being careful around these pistons not to, uh, not to push any dirt into the cylinders, try and avoid that as much as possible. Rotating the cloth around a little bit, always working with a clean area. Make sure this gasket seals good. So, some of you may be interested in what head gaskets we might actually use. And um, it's the L-ring gaskets. We're a big fan of those. We use those for all of our poor, um, standard and performance upgrades or repairs, rather. And uh, never really had a problem with an L-ring gasket, even, even I believe, 
uh, I'll have to confirm as well on our 300 horsepower engine TD5. Right, so the done thing with these studs is to screw them in until they stop and then back them out a full turn as well. So what I'll do is I'll screw them all in. It's just to stop them from butting out at the bottom of the block there when you are talking up the bolts. So what I will do is I'll screw them all in. I'm not forcing them in. Bit of resistance on them, and then I'll clean the tops off them, um, and I'll just put a marker on the top there. So when they are all backed off by one turn, we know that they're all where they should be. Oh, this one's going down quite a bit. Essentially, the studs unwound as we've undone the nut when I'm doing the head gasket. So this just helps me when I back them off by one thread, one full thread, that they're all equal. So the reason, just if I didn't cover it or if I explained it and it wasn't quite explained very well or misunderstood, 
um, the reason why we screw these in to the bottom till they stop and then um, we turn them back we back them out a full thread is that when you actually assemble the cylinder head and you um, you're going through the sequence of talking up the head bolts what you can actually find if there's a bit of friction somewhere where you don't want it um, they can actually the nut can bind on the threads and screw the stud potentially into the bottom of the block now we've never experienced um, a stud blowing through the bottom of the block but we just do that to uh, essentially prevent that from happening remembering that standard bolts head bolts are different um, and they that's it's not possible for them to actually do that um, so right with the two uh, steel dowels in place obviously I need to check the cylinder head as well that uh, when AMC supply the head they don't include those dowels in place I'm very sure they don't but I'll just have a look, another look and then it's uh, time for a gasket and then assembly right so just showing here um, what uh, assembly uh, fastener assembly we use the lubricant that we use um, it's just there to reduce the friction when you're talking up the bolts sometimes you if you're if you've done a head gasket in the past um, and you've not used the best um, fastener assembly lubricant then you can find that as you're talking things up with the door wrench you can find you can get a bit of resistance obviously you're going to be resistance rather um, you're going to get some jittering which is less than ideal so to just ensure that we are using um, we are receiving the correct torque from the torque wrench when we are fastening these up. Um, we just use a little bit of this. So, so we do actually supply, obviously, these head bolts, and recently maybe over about the past year we've been supplying some of this some little sachets of this so that our customers can use the same stuff that we use in the workshop i've seen people use copper grease engine oil and other substances to reduce the friction but i think this is the best stuff once again If you wanted to order some of this yourself, um, we don't supply it on its own, but perhaps Demon Tweaks, uh, for example, might be a good idea for you. Okay, so we're here with the car on the dyno now after the uh, cylinder head's been swapped. Uh, I've done some road testing, I'm happy with everything and the way that the vehicle performs and uh, it's keeping nice and cool as well. It's one of the very important factors there uh, when doing a head gasket uh, as well as uh, swapping the head. Of course, head gasket has to be replaced when swapping the head. 
Um, so yeah, happy with what I've uh, experienced on the road test. Plenty of power from this one. Uh, I've just got in front of me as well, the power figures from what it made before, just swap this round. Um, so yeah, we're looking to uh, essentially try and match this figure, sort of 232 uh, and 517. Uh, along the tuning start process of before when this vehicle was with us, we did actually make a little bit more uh, than that at times, but uh, those are quite realistic figures. And uh, let's see if we can produce a same. Wonder if the vehicle might make a bit more of an AMC cylinder head, you never know. So let's find out. Right, okay, something very, <laughs> very annoying just happened. I don't know whether it was my fault or not. No doubt I'm the one in control of the camera, but the first run, um, <laughs> We actually got a gain in power and torque, and um, I don't know what happened, but it did. the camera didn't record it. Sorry. Um, Going to do another run. Only be about a minute or two between the runs, so cars, same environment, etc. So, right, here we go. Just flip the camera around. Oh, there we go. And zoom in. Drop the window. Let's go for it. It will get very noisy. So fourth gear now, full throttle. So, good result there, 234 horsepower and 534 newton metres. So, gains everywhere throughout the whole range. Let me just grab the keyboard and just zoom in on that. So, what this essentially does, it just fills up the graph and use the drag wizard. There's a little dip here. So, okay bumps us up two more brake horsepower by ironing out and straightening out the, the transmission losses here. Obviously at the top of the RPM there, there was a, when, you, when you dip the clutch and go into neutral, sometimes you're going to have a little wobble on the dyno as the vehicle starts to slow down. And that's what that little tool is there for, just to straighten out the losses there. So that's looking pretty good. I'll turn the fan down so we can have a look at those graphs. So yeah, good, a good result really. I mean, gains throughout the whole, whole range, no losses anywhere, certainly. And uh, less hesitant a little bit here. I wouldn't really call that hesitant, but uh, there is a difference between the two there. Seems good. Horsepower's up, torque is up as well. Uh, I guess the only thing to do with this one now is to let it cool down. Now it's Friday, it is the 26th. Uh, had to look at the date there. It's the 26th. Um, we're going to leave the vehicle sat right here um, until Monday morning. Essentially what was going on with the vehicle, if you didn't not quite uh, caught the, 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 the main focus of this video is that, that after leaving the vehicle stood for a couple of days, it, would, it wouldn't fail to start, but it would somehow get air in the fuel system. And you would, you would turn, you would turn the uh, ignition uh, and crank it over and you'd need throttle to start the vehicle, which 
You shouldn't need that. Um, so yeah, uh, going back, we've looked at the injector seals. We suspected those. No doubt we've shown you those already. If not, maybe we'll pop them in now. Um, and, uh, and, and suspected the way that the cylinder head had had the seats cut as well, of course. Okay, so the weekend has now passed. Let's try and start the car. I would say fingers crossed, but I am super confident in this. So here we go. Fuel pump sounds good. Yes. That is really responsive. Yep, yeah, all sounds good. So yeah, previously, if the vehicle was left any more time than one day, uh, what we'd essentially get is a non-start or at least a, uh, a vehicle that's super hesitant to start. So you crank the vehicle, you need to hold full throttle down for, I don't know, a long time. Eventually the vehicle would pick up because the, uh, I guess we've proved it, the injector seals all along. Um, yeah, well, we got there. Uh, hopefully you've enjoyed uh, the whole video, the whole uh, TD5 90 saga. Uh, um, but uh, I think uh, from here, we're going to go for a road test. So come on, let's go, uh, I'll bring you with me. Right then, we're out on a road test. spinning. This thing would do with a GTB 550. So second gear now, punch it. Now we have got a bit of traffic obviously.
think we ordered it about... <laughs> I know people say there's a long wait in this point. I think we ordered this about three months ago. And, uh, yeah, it didn't come in like four weeks. And we thought, it's coming from France. Where is it? And, uh, yeah, Gary chased it up. Yeah, we could be waiting a while. So it's here now anyway. Came, I think it arrived. Yeah, you're right Friday, so. Right then, fourth, third. for a road test and guess what's happened we've broken down again not really <laughs> we've come to get some drive-by footage so let's try and do this now i've never really used this road for any drive-by footage and hopefully it will be right. okay hopefully nobody tries to park the vehicle on top of this camera because that would be a bad do right off we go. I just stopped, like, I don't know, a few hundred yards up the road and I couldn't find this camera. <laughs> I couldn't find the camera. I thought, there's been one car go past. No. Anyway, thank God you're there. Right, that was... T <sighs> that wasn't great. So, anyway, I guess that brings us to the end of the vlog uh, with this 90. Um, what a ride. <laughs> it's been a long old ride and um, it's been fun. We've uh, had the opportunity to upgrade this vehicle. Suspension, transmission, engine and power, um, servicing the vehicle, so much um, over the past couple of months. And it's been an absolute delight to work with. <laughs> of course. <sir. laughs> yeah, this is, uh, I guess that brings us to the end of the vlog with this one. And uh, yeah, it's been an absolute treat to work on this vehicle in, in the grand scheme of things. Yes, it's tested me uh, and yes, it's been a difficult one at times with the whole non-start issue, uh, but we have got there and uh, what a sight to behold. Those wheels, that ride height brought to you by the Alive Comfort lowering suspension kit, the Bilstein dampers that evolved to our specifications as well such a such a sporty vehicle and uh, it really does knock off so many years of how this vehicle feels in regards to age it rides 
it doesn't ride like a car, it rides like a, uh, a much nicer Defender. So yeah, a little bit of road testing, Lincolnshire, very cold today. And uh, hopefully that's it. <laughs> um, so yeah, anyway guys, as usual, thanks for subscribing. No, do that again. But yeah, anyway guys, thanks again for subscribing. Thanks for liking and commenting on the videos as always. I'm Stu and this is Alive!